Before we get started, just to let you guys know, I switched to a lavalier mic for this video, and I didn't realize until I started editing that my stupid ass necklace is hitting it the whole time. And I didn't feel like doing the whole video over again, so please just deal with it for this one time, and I promise for the next video, I'll be sure to take the necklace off. My bad. What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here with another episode of Album by Element, where you guys get to pick the album that I review. And today the winner is Animal Collective's Strawberry Jam. Before we get into that, real quick, I want to let you guys know that I teamed up with my friends over at Stilettos as Weapons to do a super limited t-shirt with my ridiculous mug on it. Um, it's only going to be up for another week or so, so if you want one, make sure you jump on it. StilettosWeapons.com is where they can be found, but I'll make sure I put a link directly to the shirt down there. Now, um, I like Animal Collective. Um, I like... The idea of them, maybe more than I like the actual music itself, if that makes any sense. But I do like uh, some of their music. I like Sung Tongs a lot. Um, I like Feels a lot. I find those albums to be immensely more interesting, honestly, than Strawberry Jam. I'm more into the experimental folk pop stuff that they do more than anything else. And outside of it being uh, a Pitchfork favorite, I don't really hear anyone around me talking about Strawberry Jam. Um, and I'm actually a bit surprised that it won the poll, to be honest. I'm not really sure why you guys want my opinion on this one so badly. Like, y'all were sending me messages on Facebook, on Twitter, like, harassing me about it. So, I don't know, it's kind of funny. And, you know, I'm here for the people, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, the first song, Peace Bone, I found that to be interesting. It reminds me of if the Beatles had continued making music into a semi-modern day and started doing way more drugs. Um, I really, really like the hook. And just a few things are related to the old times. Then we did believe in magic and we did die. It's not my words that you should follow. It's your insides. You're just an inside. Seems to be about how we only retain certain things from when we were kids. You know, things that could actually benefit us as adults, but we dismiss them as old times. You know, old things that don't matter anymore. We stop believing in magic and to a degree, we die, you know, our, our, our inner child dies, our sense of imagination dies. And as kids, we, we kind of do what we feel until we're trained to do what we're told. Another aspect of youth that the singer seems to be reminiscing on. Musically, it wasn't all that interesting to me. The kind of weird electronic bouncy feel that moves along through the song without any real shifts, it didn't really suck me in. But uh, that whole theme I was talking about, it becomes weird as we move into the next song, which is Unsolved Mysteries where it seems to be talking about a mom watching her child grow up and then one day she realizes that her son is Jack the Ripper, someone known for killing and mutilating women. Again, musically, it's not very interesting to me. Similar to the first song, but this one, it has more guitar in it and then what sounds like some bubbles or some shit in the background. Yeah, it just, it just wasn't for me. For Reverend Green was actually uh, a cool song to me. At least the instrumental was a bit more interesting than the others. It seemed to have a bit more cohesion and some semblance of progression. And Tear's vocals here were pretty cool. The inclusion of this really passionate scream that he's able to seamlessly alternate with this kind of frail singing voice was really, really cool. Number one was actually a great song too. Instrumentally, it reminded me of something weird that like Nurse With Wound would do, maybe mixed with some legendary pink dots or something. And the vocal treatment here was really interesting, almost creepy. The way the voice is deepened to an almost indiscernible level was a really good choice. And the whole idea of a father talking to his firstborn son about life was just really, really, really dope. Young love is fine, just please respect the candles as they line. Being young is awesome, but respect the idea of getting older, that your youth isn't going to be forever. You know, make the most of it. And his son replies back that he won't waste his time. It's such a, a, a touching song. Cuckoo was a really good song as well. Probably my favorite on the whole album. I really like the instrumental. The piano sample that they used, it worked really nicely. And I really like the buildup of the song. The pounding drums that come in as a song moves on, the guitars that enter to kind of break up the beauty of the piano sample. It's really, really, really well done. And it's especially moving against the lyrics that seem to be a contemplation about death. That moves on to that small insertion about the kids playing together, but when one of them dies, they can no longer play with them, which is a bit morbid, but, but poignant as fuck in this song. 
Then it goes on to discuss the idea of escapism, you know, escapism through music um, or, or the escapism that you, you find in the comfort of your mom's arms, especially if you're a child. You know, a mom's hug can make anything go away. And the singer seemed to be saying that he needs that kind of escapism right now because the bad shit in life, I assume to be primarily death in this instance, is driving him cuckoo. The last song, Derek, was a nice closer. I liked the frail guitar work at the beginning that progresses into something a bit louder with the choppy sounding percussion work and the vocal chants. They go so well with the song and the theme of comparing his dog and how he treated the dog while the dog was alive to his kid and how he wants to be the person that his kid can count on. He wants to treat the kid so much better than he treated the dog. He seems to have some regrets about how he didn't give the dog the love that he deserved while he was around and wants to make sure that he doesn't repeat that with his child. It's a really, really interesting idea. All in all though, this album is cool, but it's, it's just not for me. It doesn't hold my interest and I actually do find it to be a bit boring. Like I said before, it sounds to me like a weird version of the Beatles and I like the Beatles, but I simply don't care to listen to this. Uh, the balance of fragility with, with harshness or like this mild aggression uh, is interesting, but I don't feel like the tension really pays off sonically for me personally. The album, again, it just comes off a bit dull. I find the lyrics and the themes uh, far more interesting than the album itself. Uh, kind of similar to how I felt about that Father John Misty album. Um, but yeah, it's a cool album. I don't think I'll return to it, but um, I had heard some songs here and there before and I didn't like them and I just never bothered to listen to the entire thing, but I'm glad I finally did. Now I know what this album sounds like in its totality and um, it's just not for me. But yeah, that's it for this review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave some comments down there and also the poll for the next Out of My Element is gonna be down there as well. So make sure you click that and go vote on the next album. All right, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace out, boy!